हेलो एवरीबॉडी द हेड मसल्स कैन बी क्लासिफाइड इनटू मसल्स एसोसिएटेड विद फेशियल एक्सप्रेशन एंड मसल्स एसोसिएटेड विद मैस्टिकेशन और चूइंग ऑफ फूड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू फोकस ऑन मसल्स एसोसिएटेड विद फेशियल एक्सप्रेशन लेट्स स्टार्ट सो मसल्स एसोसिएटेड विद फेशियल एक्सप्रेशन कैन बी क्लासिफाइड इन ऑर्बिटल मसल्स विच आर मसल्स एसोसिएटेड विद द आई नेजल मसल्स which are muscles associated with the nose and oral muscles which are muscles associated with the oral cavity we'll discuss two eye muscles three nasal muscles and 10 oral muscles that are associated with facial expressions let's start with the orbital muscles so the first muscle that we are going to focus on is the orbicularis oculi now let's break this word orbicularis and oculi oculi is indicative of eye whereas orbicularis is something that will orbit around something or something that will surround something so this means surrounding something when we put one and one together it is a muscle that is surrounding the eye so therefore it surrounds the eye now the orbicularis oculi can further be classified into three parts one is the orbital part the second is the palpable part and the third is the lacrimal part the orbital part is a part that you will use when you are forcefully closing your eyes like when you wink the palpable part is a part which you will use when you gently close your eyes like when you close your eyes while sleeping and the lacrimal part is a part that is present on the medial side of the orbicularis oculi and when this part is compressed it results in flow of tears next we move to corrugator superciliae corrugator superciliae will originate on the superciliary arch which is an arch present on the frontal bone indicative of the eyebrow and it inserts on the skin of the eyebrow now this muscle is the frowning muscle that brings our eyebrows together when we frown how i memorize that the corrugator supercilia is the frowning muscle is that the word corrugator rhymes with the word interrogator and an interrogator will always frown and ask questions therefore the corrugator supercilia is the frowning muscle so these were our orbital muscles that are associated with facial expressions next we move to nasal muscles we have three nasal muscles that we are going to talk about so let's say this is your nose and these are your eyes these being your eyebrows so your procerus muscle will be somewhere here so the procerus muscle it originates on the nasal bridge and it will insert on the skin between the eyebrows now the procerus muscle it is associated with the expression that you make when you smell something unpleasant i remember this fact by keeping in mind that procerus is something that sounds close to process so when you actually smell something unpleasant you actually start thinking the root cause of the smell so you are actually processing what is actually causing the unpleasant smell therefore the procerus muscle is a muscle that is used to form the facial expression when you smell something unpleasant next we move to the nasalis muscle now let's say this is our nose so nasalis muscle is going to be something like this it is going to originate on the maxilla and it's going to insert onto the nasal cartilage the nasalis muscle can be classified into two groups one is the transverse group and the other one is the alar group the transverse group is associated with compressing the nares while the alar group is associated with dilating the nares so how i remember that the transverse is associated with compression and the alar is associated with dilation is notice the notice your lips when you say the word transverse and when you say the word alar when you say the word alar your mouth opens a bit more wider as compared to when you say the word transverse therefore the alar is associated with dilation 
or opening of things wider while transverse is associated with compression next we move to the final nasal muscle which is the depressor septi nasi now let's again look at one word at a time let's look at nasi first nasi is indicative of nose so we'll write that septi is indicative of septum depressor simply means depression or lowering something so we'll write lowering now let's put these words together depressor septi nasi lowering septum of the nose so it is a muscle that is associated with the function of lowering the nasal septum so therefore we know if its function is to lower the nasal septum it has to be attached onto the septum and also to a part below the septum so that when this muscle will contract it will lower the nasal septum so if you have understood the function of this muscle it's quite easy to understand that this this might be present at the mustache region so it's present above the upper lip below the nose it originates on the maxilla which is the upper jaw and it inserts onto the nasal septum as well as the posterior part of the alar region of the nose therefore it brings down the nasal septum now next we have the oral group the oral group comprises of 10 muscles we'll talk about the orbicularis oris first now we've already looked at this word before which is in the eye let's go back to that here orbicularis oculi which meant surrounding eye let's go back to orbicularis oris so here oris means the oral cavity while orbicularis is indicative of surrounding something so this muscle is found surrounding the oral cavity next we move to the muscles now we'll discuss the muscles that are present superior to the lip so they are present above the lip so we have the zygomaticus minor and the zygomaticus major these are two muscles that help in smiling now as the name suggests zygomaticus so both these muscles originate on the zygomatic bone now both of these muscles will insert onto the angle of the mouth they will both be inserting on the angle of the mouth both of them originate on the zygomatic bone both of them insert at the angle of the mouth so what is the difference between these two muscles the difference comes here the suffix one is minor and the other is major the minor muscle is going to be smaller while the major muscle is going to be bigger now if you know the position of the zygomatic bone it's a bone that's located inferolateral to the eye now for a minor to be small and the major to be big major has to cover a larger distance and the minor has to cover a shorter distance let's say this is the eye of the individual this is the nose and these are the lips so this circle over here is indicative of the zygomatic bone so if we draw the first muscle that's going to be like this the second muscle is going to be like this now if we notice this muscle on the lateral side has covered a larger distance while this muscle on the medial side has covered a shorter distance therefore the muscle on the lateral side is the major muscle because it's covered a larger distance while the muscle on the medial side is going to be the minor muscle that's going to cover a shorter distance therefore the minor muscle is going to originate medial to the major muscle next we move to the buccinator muscle the buccinator muscle is our cheek muscle so if you notice the cheek region it spans between the upper and the lower jaw therefore the origin is the maxilla which is the upper jaw and the mandible which is the lower jaw and they all come together and insert at the angle of the mouth 
Next, we move to the rhizorius muscle. Rhizorius muscle is the laughing muscle. So, how I remember that rhizorius is the laughing muscle is that you rise and laugh. I keep this phrase in mind which helps me associate rhizorius laughing muscle. Rhizorius will originate on the masseter fascia and it inserts onto the angle of the mouth. So the masseter fascia, it is a fascia that strongly and firmly covers the masseter muscle. So it is from this fascia that the rhizorius muscle will originate. Next we have the levator labii superioris aliqui nasi. It's a mouthful and it is the longest name of any muscle in an animal. It originates on the maxilla and it inserts onto the upper lip. Next we have levator labii superioris. This muscle will originate from both the maxilla and the zygomatic bone to show its superiority. So the maxilla and the zygomatic bone are common origin sites for most of the muscles that are located superior to the lip and it will insert onto the upper lip. Next we have the levator anguli oris. This will originate on the maxilla and it will insert onto the angle of the mouth. Next we move to muscles that are present below the lip. We have three muscles present below the lip. First one is mentalis. Now mental does not only mean a state of mind but it also means the chin. So mentalis is a chin muscle. It originates on the mandible which is the lower jaw and it inserts onto the skin of the chin. Next we have the depressor labii inferioris. If you notice this row. Levator, depressor, labii will stay as labii. Superioris will become inferioris. So these are antagonistic muscles. They are antagonists of one another. Levator labii superioris which will levate or lift up the lip. On the other hand, the depressor labii inferioris which is present below the lip will depress the lip. This will originate on the mandible and insert onto the lower lip. Finally, we have the depressor anguli oris. Now, if you look at this row as well. Levator. Depressor. Anguli. Anguli. Oris. Oris. So, the row at the bottom are also antagonists of each other. Levator anguli oris. Angular levation of the lip. While the depressor anguli oris is associated with angular depression of the lip. It will originate on the inferior border of the mandible and insert at the angle of the mouth. So we've covered all the muscles that are associated with the facial expression. This is an overview of the entire content covered in today's video. I hope this video was helpful for you. That's all we have for today. Thank you.